The Italian Grand Prix at Monza, the fastest track on the Formula One calendar. Craig, you're joining me here to take a look at some of the impact of those high speeds on some of the cars. And the one that's jumped out straight away is this, the Red Bull. What's going on here? Well, this is what we've seen before, isn't it? That the DRS opens and the wing wants to go over centre and it gets blown back down and it gets into a resonance and we get this flapping all the way down the straight, which we've seen before. Uh, there are some questions about it. It's not really improving the car's performance. It's arguably not uh, illegal. Uh, it's just you know, a real pain for Red Bull to have to deal with every time we go to a super high speed circuit. Okay, this is not the first time we've seen it in 2022, but it's not the first time we've seen it in, in history as well, because we go back to the Mexican Grand Prix last season. Max Verstappen coming out of the pit lane. Now keep an eye on his rear wing where it says Honda. It falls apart as soon as he gets the gear engaged and the car goes through that wheel spin vibration. The whole back end of that, that Red Bull just shatters. Now, what? Why are they getting this so badly wrong? Like this section here, they've been working on that rear wing, on that DRS actuation, and it just keeps breaking. What's the problem? If I could answer it, I would sell it to Red Bull. Um, I think the main thing is, is, you know, they've got lots of vibration in the car, but they're trying to make the wings as light as possible to reduce the weight of the car in its totality. But equally, because it's quite high up, it lowers the centre of gravity to make the rear wing lighter. So I think it's just about them being very economical with the engineering to get the weight out of the car. And that just leads to these kind of vibration problems. Now, weight is a big problem for all of the cars up and down the grid in 2022. But in 2021, as we were just talking about, it wasn't. And we kept seeing these problems for Red Bull. Here at the Brazilian Grand Prix qualifying Max Verstappen's fastest lap. Take a look at the rear wing here. It's a little bit hard to see at full speed. I'll wind that back so you can just see a little bit closer what was going on with the rear wing of that Red Bull. Now watch it flapping up and down there at the back of the car. It's not meant to do that. And there was some argument, because rear wings were a big topic at Brazil last year, <laughs> that that may have had some legality implications. Everybody seemed happy with it because that probably slowed the car down. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't do the car any good. And it just means that every time they come back into the pits, they've got to work on that DRS mechanism. It's got a little, what they call snubber, a little bump stop to stop the wing getting too high. Clearly, that's not working. And the wing gets too high, and then you just get this vibration. And again, you would have thought now, you know, almost a year later, still having the same problems. The DRS actuator is one of the few parts on these cars where the, at least the concept, the mechanical concept, could carry over from year to year. It will have to be a different shape. The rear wing is a different shape. But are they still suffering from the same problem? Is it a design issue? Because nobody else up and down the grid has this problem. Well, you do see other teams playing with that sort of little snubber and the way that the wing rests against the top of the DRS mechanism. Everyone has a different way of working. And perhaps now it's time for Red Bull to reassess what they're doing for next year. Well, for Red Bull, they need to go and do a little bit more work on the rear end of their car. Will it make a difference to this year's World Championship? Well, we'll just have to wait and see.